Thanks for joining me for another video. I'm Stephen Lutz with Rugged Routes, and today I'm going to show you something a little bit different. Uh, today I want to introduce you guys to a project I've been working on for a little while, uh, and I've been doing this, well, I don't want to talk about how long I've been working on it, but I've been working on, on and off for a little while. What this is, is a infrared belt temp sensor that displays your belt temperature on the screen of your Lowrance. And when I say belt temp, I'm talking about the CVT belt on side by sides. So this is a really simple, uh, simple product that I'm going to be bringing to market. And right now I've got about half a dozen of them built. We're going to be playing with them. We've got one installed, about four more going out. We're going to play with them for a little while just to make sure everything's good. I've been through a couple revisions already, but I think I think we're done. So. I just want to introduce this to you guys and kind of get some feedback from you guys in the comments below this video, as well as uh, there will be a link down there for those of you that are interested and want to be notified as soon as they become available. So jumping into it real quick, I want to show you guys what it looks like. So this is the sensor here on the screen. And basically, it's a one inch cube that will mount on top of the uh, the belt cover or the belt housing on your side by side. You have to drill a hole right above the center of the belt and you'll line up this hole that's on the bottom of the sensor uh, with that hole that you drilled. That way this the sensor that's behind this lens can directly uh, you know see for lack of a better term the, the belt. So I'll show you some pictures of how this all hooks up too. Uh, electrically this hooks up pretty dang simple for those of you that are familiar with hooking up the point one Baja antenna, this diagram should look very familiar to you. Basically, this is the NEMA 2000 port on the back. It has a, a black cable. It comes off the back of the unit into a T connector, and which plugs in another T connector that then goes up to your point one antenna. Now, let's say you don't have a point one antenna you're going to have to have this exact same wiring diagram, but you're going to put the sensor up here instead of the point one. Uh, of course, you do have to have this other T as well that provides power to all the devices that are teed into this network. So let's say you do have a point one antenna and you have the belt temp sensor. They'll both get power from, from this power source uh, on the T. So uh, a common question I get is, do I have to have two powers when I'm hooking up NEMA 2000? The answer is yes. You have the power cord that goes into the unit itself, and then you have the separate power that powers all of the stuff on, on this network. So uh, if you do want to run the external antenna and the belt temp sensor at the same time, it's not a problem at all. You just have to simply add another T and uh, run the, the sensor in parallel. And I'll kind of explain to you guys how all this uh, went together when we did this one. So this is a picture of it mounted on a 2013 Razor 900. And all we did was, was we popped the, the cover off just so we can figure out where the center of the belt was and drill the hole in the top of the cover. Uh, once that hole was drilled, we mounted the sensor there and ran the cable forward and then uh, just hooked it up into a, an extension cable, a NEMA 2000 extension cable, which the length will vary based on what car you're putting it on. The sensor itself only has probably about six or eight inches of, uh, of a lead coming off. So you'll just put a, an extension on there and, and then run it up towards the front of the car and into the T. So in this case, we already had a point one antenna already hooked up. So we just added another T connector in here and wired everything back up. And this is the, the new extension that just goes back to the sensor. So it's pretty simple. Uh, electrically, hooking it up is, is really no big deal at all. Uh, especially back at that point one already, it's literally a, a single cable and a T. So um, that takes care of that. That's really the hard part, which is pretty simple. Now, when it comes to hooking up the uh, or I should say configuring the Lorance, it's still pretty simple. What we're looking at here is, I in my example here is an HDS7, a Gen 3, but this will work on Elite 7, TI, or I, not just the 7s, but 7 and larger, so not the original uh, Elite 5, but the 7 and larger screens, uh, Elite TI2s, 
as well as HDS Gen 2 button and touchscreen units, Generation 3, Carbon, and Lives. So pretty much all of the HDS units with the exception of Generation 1. So in order to configure the, the overlay for displaying the belt temp, you'll want to momentarily push the, the power button. And from here, you'll want to make sure the data overlay option is enabled. So right here, select that, you'll get the orange bar, and you'll get all of your other information, or whatever you already have configured, if you already have something configured, uh, will all appear. Uh, next, we're going to want to go into the edit overlay option. And you can see that uh, basically we've got this blue box around one of our overlays. And it also says editing overlay at the top. So we're in the editing overlay mode. So in there, we're going to want to expand our menu and go to add at the top. So we want to add our sensor in here. So this sensor actually shows up under transmission. And then we're going to put a check mark next to the trans oil temp. Now, I know there's no oil involved here, but basically the Lorance units are marine units, and they support a lot of different types of marine-related sensors. So this sensor is basically emulating a transmission oil temperature sensor that you would use on a boat, but we're using it for, you know, we're using the software side of it uh, as the, the trans oil temp, but we know it's really the belt temp for the side-by-side. So you can see on mine here on the left side, we've already got the temperature showing up in a digital digital way, but we're going to kind of reconfigure some of that stuff. So on the right side, with the temp selected, you know it's selected because it's that, that blue box around it. We'll hit configure, and then we'll go and we'll switch the type to analog, and we'll, we'll make it large for right now. Come back, and then the the thing I really want to show you guys is setting these limits. So these are kind of default limits that are in here. For this example, I'm just going to put the, the bottom of the gauge is going to read 0. And then the, let me get back out of here. The top of the gauge, we're going to have it read uh, 300 degrees. And so that just kind of sets our min and max of, of the range of what the gauge is actually capable of showing. The next one down here, the warnings, this is actually going to show uh, basically a, a red line. It's going to have a red area at the bottom of the gauge and at the top of the gauge. If we don't want the red area at the bottom of the gauge, we can just zero that out. That's not a problem. But what we're most concerned with is how, how hot our belt is running. Because for those of you that are running real hard in the desert, real hard on tracks, or just simply drive your machines real hard, all the time, you don't want this belt to get too hot. So in this case, all I'm going to go ahead and just leave it at 240 degrees. Click OK. And you can see now that the gauge on the left side has uh, a red area starting at 240 degrees. So should your belt get that hot, an alarm will actually pop up on the screen letting you know that your belt's just, it's, it's gotten above that threshold and you need to change your driving style, let it cool off for a minute. So uh, as you can see, the gauge is still blue because it, it thinks we still want to edit stuff. So we'll hit back, we'll hit save, and we're good to go. So right now I just have a sensor sitting on the desk over here on my, my test bench, and it's just reading ambient air temperature uh, here in the office. But there you have it. That's how it works, and uh, that's how you hook it up and all that good stuff. So. Let me know what you guys think. I'm anxious to, to hear what kind of feedback you guys have and any questions. And, of course, I'm going to drop that link, like I was saying, in there. So if you want to get notified when this thing gets released, drop your email address in there, and we'll, we'll let you know. So As always, uh, please subscribe to this video, uh, or my channel, I should say. And if you've got uh, friends or people on social media that might be interested, please share this video with them. Uh, I'm just trying to get the word out there and kind of kind of feel things out so we'll see how it goes thanks a bunch for tuning in and we'll catch you on the next video